Hello to my lovely subscribers. Another week has passed and I have been wearing, I actually pulled out a few of my colder weather perfumes this week, which was quite exciting to be honest, because it's taken us a little bit of a while to have weather where I feel comfortable in some of my stronger scents. You know, the things that I don't necessarily have to respray, stuff that just is generally quite strong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with, let's see, this, which is a super cheapy. In the UK, you can get this on Amazon, I think, for like a tenner. This is the Scent Doctor, and this is Cherry Mola, which is a Sherry Moya scent, um, which is that kind of, I think they call it Barbados Cherry. It's a beautiful coloured bottle. I tried a few of these. Um, I actually gave them away because uh, all of the ones I tried that were in the white bottles I didn't like, but I do like this one. This one, not on Fragrantica. So the notes from the actual Scent Doctor website are, let's have a look, top notes, pear, apple, cherry moya and cinnamon. Mill notes are passion flower, ylang and jasmine. Base notes are tonka bean, balsam, woods and musk. This is one where it's really autumnal and wintry to me because of that kind of fruity cinnamon smell. It's super pretty. This is too, because I think it's to do with the cinnamon because this is not a massively strong scent, but I can't wear this one in warmer weather. And I think I find it cloying because it has that kind of sweet, fruity cinnamon scent in it, along with like quite syrupy fruits. If you can imagine something like uh, the Kaali Eden Juicy Apple, that kind of slightly childish kind of fruity scent, but then with a little dose of something a bit more spicy in it, so it smells a bit more grown up. This one you have to respray all the time, but it's so cheap, I don't really mind. I just tucked the bottle in my bag and I wore it to work. It's quite good if you're maybe not feeling the most cheerful, it's quite a cheerful, pretty scent, this one. And like I said, it's super, super cheap. Um, I can smell the cinema. I can smell the apple. I'm not really sure that I... I mean, I think it would be passionflower, probably, if this was being voted on. Uh, maybe a bit musky. It's just it's just pretty. It's got that... It's not doesn't actually smell like, smell like mould wine, but it does give me that kind of feeling. So that one can go there. And then what did I do? Okay. Oh, yes. Well, hmm. the order in which to do these. So I wore this one at the weekend and I just love this one. I just, this, oh, this is Philosophy Fresh Cream and Mint. You can still get this in the UK and you can get it uh, from eBay. I think that's where I got this. I got it for super cheap. It's just so nice I, I really really like to be honest I really like the fresh cream range just generally I think the body spritzes are, are really pretty um they're definitely a little bit stronger in colder weather than they were in the warmer weather but they work nicely both times this is kind of like just freshen up in the morning um this one even though it's mint which tends to be a kind of nice wake up kind of scent this one because it's got that kind of creamy fresh cream sweetness as well works perfectly well for bed too it's just lovely i really really like this i think it's definitely worth having a bit of a shame they never made perfumes of the the other fresh creams in this range because the fresh cream and honey one's nice as well the uh, lemon custard that I had and you'll notice if uh, if I wear that one again soon I decanted some of that into a little bottle and then I gave the big bottle away because I had a massive bottle of that and I think realistically because I've been I've been smelling I will talk about it at a later date but I've been smelling quite a few kind of sweet lemon perfumes and as much as I liked the lemon custard, I was never going to get through a massive bottle of it because I also have the and fragrances 
far perfume and that one smells like a delicious sugary lemon cheesecake so it's kind of creamy it's sweet it's got beautiful lemon in it it's quite gourmand so I was like I don't really need this massive bottle it's taking up quite a lot of space um, so now the only massive bottle I've got of these philosophy ones is the fresh cream and that is the one that I would like to have the big bottle of if you see what I mean although to be honest I wouldn't mind having this in a massive bottle I do love it I can't find any notes for it but it is pretty much the base of the original fresh cream <laughs> with a delicious kind of sort of what are they called like a mint stick of rock kind of mint smell in it so it doesn't smell like toothpaste it's just so pretty I really like it if you like sweet mint perfumes I think you'd probably love that it's really nice um oh this absolute stunner gosh I was glad to get this one out again this is Lonvin Oxygen I just love this perfume I've talked about it on here many times on my channel it is a absolute steal. I think the bottle is super cool. People do complain about this sprayer, um, but I think it's actually, I find this super easy to spray and this one is strong and it lasts all day. It's, so, it's a weird perfume and it's kind of hard to describe and it's kind of like, you'd need to smell it for yourself. <laughs> but if you like slightly lactonic perfumes if you like perfumes that smell kind of like a spa if you like sweet perfumes that smell a bit like they've got like white sugar in um if you like iris perfumes if you like all of those things totally this would be a safe blind buy i think because i i do think that that kind of encompasses the general scent of this i do think this smells quite unisex my when i first got this i i asked my husband to try it as well and he smells spectacular in this perfume and i mean my husband um is a incredibly masculine looking man but he doesn't like kind of traditional masculine scents the ones that you know the ones that are kind of screaming oh look at how manly i am i think he thinks they're a bit basic he doesn't tend to like them he does like the sweeter scents and he smells really good in sweeter scents. So he smells really nice in this. I think I smell really nice in this. I have smelt someone before in the co-op wearing this and I, I was just walking behind her and thinking, oh, I recognise oxygen anywhere. It just smells gorgeous. So you'll see that I actually tried something called Milky Musk. So um, this is a Milky Musk perfume that's what it is but it's a milky musk perfume that has a beautiful iris note it's also got white pepper and i like or is it black pepper um let me just have a look at the notes gosh it's so lush i love this perfume um let me just find the notes on here i've got to scroll past all my word or screenshots <laughs> so oxygen here we go oh it is it's yo it's white pepper so Top notes are white pepper, Indian white pepper specifically, bergamot. Middle notes are milk, gardenia and rose. And the base notes are musk, iris and white sandalwood. So you've definitely got sandalwood in the base, which gives this this kind of lovely, creamy, ever so slightly powdery. And then obviously like iris is quite powdery as well. And then you've got this beautiful kind of slightly bar soapy musk. The milk in here, it definitely is like, a thin milk if you see what I mean rather than like a, a really kind of creamy vibe and it smells to me very cold and I think that's because of that iris note you know it doesn't smell icy and that's probably the white pepper but this is one the other thing to say about Lonvin Oxygen do not buy this second hand because I've tried a second hand one of this before and it just smelled like pepper that because you know when like a perfume goes off it smells like pepper anyway and this has white pepper in it and I've seen lots of people talking about how peppery this is but I, I feel like if you get a fresh bottle which I mean they are literally like 20 quid for 75 mil um yeah if you get if you can manage to get a fresh bottle I don't think pepper will be the main thing you're smelling here. I think it smells like a cold glass of milk with a spoonful, well, a tablespoonful of white sugar dissolved in it and then a beautiful musky iris sandalwoody scent. 
the I think the gardenia probably is like adding to this whole thing. I don't necessarily get a lot of rose here, but the iris I think is the strongest floral to me, and it's just beautiful. It is a beast on me. I can spray this on. If you get this on this on your clothes, it will last like until you wash them. But this one, if I spray it on my skin, I will smell it all day, and then I will just reapply it before I leave work. So this one, you, I have to spray it into a little bottle because this one is, I wouldn't take this bottle to work. But I love it. I just love it. I just absolutely love that one. I think it's scrumptious. Um, hmm, what am I going to do next? So, well, let's talk about this guy. Let me get the notes up. So I wear this maybe once a year because it is an expensive perfume. It's quite special. This is... I think this is a bottle. This is from before they changed it. I think this is like, is it 2002 or something? I can't remember when they actually changed it. But um, well, they reformulated it, I should say. Although I have heard um, Sarah Mace, I think she has both versions. And I think she says that they haven't butchered it. So this is June by Christian Dior. So I don't know if you can see, but this has kind of hard to because it's got this kind of slightly iridescent thing going on the old ones have a thick kind of white um sprayer tube thing the new ones have a much thinner tube so if you can see this has quite a thick white tube and um, i have checked the code on this before um so i can't remember this is some kind sometime in the 2000s and it's before the last reformulation um, and obviously it still says Christian Dior on it, so. I mean, the thing with June, if you don't like vintage perfumes, you're not going to like June. I mean, the, the, you know, that's that's given, I think. But June is a very beautiful perfume. It's got a little bit of the, <laughs> that you know, the Calvin Klein obsession, like the original obsession. It has a hint of that, but it's much smoother and softer. And mainly the kind of obsession vibe. You get it more in the beginning when you get those aldehydes. You get the really kind of strong vintage perfume smell. But the more it dries down, the more soft it gets. It gets kind of like this almost creamy, powdery, woody scent with this lovely vanilla that starts poking through. And by that point, it's just... There's something very magical about this, but it is definitely a vintage scent, you know. The notes are top notes of Brazilian rosewood and aldehydes, mandarin, orange, bergamot and peony. The middle notes are lily, ylang ylang, wallflower, jasmine and rose. The base notes are amber, sandalwood, benzoin, oak moss, vanilla, patchouli and musk. Happily, I don't get a huge amount of oak, moss and patchouli going on here, but I get the vanilla, the amber, the sandalwood, the benzoin, the musk and the vanilla. Like that's, I think I said vanilla twice, but this to me is a sandalwood and rosewood scent. I feel like that is the main thing going on here. It's, I'm just trying to think what else I can, I, I mean, I don't have a huge amount of woody perfumes. This one's just kind of special. And I did always want to wear Obsession, but Obsession I found a bit too masculine, a little bit too spicy, a little bit too harsh, even back like in the day. And I think the new version is probably a very watered down version of that. But June smells like warm sand. It just like the name is so perfect. There's something really special about it. And I'm really glad that you, I think you can still get this on the Dior website. I've never seen this like I don't think I've seen this in shops for like at least 10 years. So I don't think any of the Dior counters have this in stock, sadly. So it's, and you can't really get testers. So it's very much a kind of blind buy it, see what happens. If you like things like Obsession, if, if you like things like uh, Adam Levine for, for her, I think probably you'd think June was beautiful. When I first spray it, I'm like, woof, so vintage. I'm going to smell super old school today. And then it starts to dry down and I get this just beautiful, soft sand, wood and um, vanilla. That's that's just how this smells on me. And I mean, it's, de it's definitely musky, but there's definitely a gorgeous sweetness running through here. And I, I just wanted something cosy. I just wanted something warm, cosy. 
and I did fancy something a bit old school so I wore this to work I loved it it's such a gorgeous scent I still love that bottle as well mm. and then let's see oh yes oh I was talking to someone in my comments about this. So this is Vera Wang Embrace and this is my French Lavender and Tuberose. Let's try and position that so you can actually see it. it's got this lovely kind of, it's almost like a grey pinky purple uh, liquid, very lavendery in colour but very soft. Um, let's just, yeah, let's not blind everyone with that. <laughs> Beautiful. I love this perfume as you can see like I've actually made a good dent in it so I mean the, the June has a dent because it's such a such an old bottle right but this one I've had for maybe three when did it come out maybe three years I'm not sure time has no meaning anymore <laughs> at a certain age this one has top notes of mandarin orange middle notes lavender and tuberose base notes vanilla and cacao and I did, I've said before, it reminds me a bit of the Maison Martin Margiela replica um, coffee break. That's a kind of sweet, creamy lavender perfume. It's got florals in it. That one has coffee, but on my skin, the coffee always translated as cocoa. It was more chocolatey than coffee. -y. Coffee. -y. Uh, <laughs> that's not a word. Anyway, the thing is with replica, they all smell quite bad on me. I'm not really sure why. I've never really found one. I didn't mind the way that Jazz Club and By the Fireplace smell from what I remember, but they were both just like... Um, I found By the Fireplace when it dried down to be a very sickly vanilla, so I didn't like that one. And I really liked Jazz Club, but it was just too masculine for me personally. I just... I, I wouldn't have worn it. But... Someone in my comments said that they tried this one and they thought it was super soapy. And I, I do, I can see that. I can see that the tuberose in this, I think, is very soapy. Um, and I'd never really thought about that before because to me, this does come across, and still this time wearing it again, it comes across to me as a gourmand. Because it smells like a kind of candied lavender. A very, like a vanilla cream almost. And then cocoa powder. And the cocoa powder, I can't really smell it in the top notes. It, but it smells very sugary to me as well, this one. It has that similar thing from the Periwinkle and Iris from this same collection. That it smells like sugar and cream. But this one has a bit more vanilla. So, I mean, I love this. Um, but I can, I can, if you're a bit fussy about tuberose or if you find tuberose to be quite a soapy scent, the way that I do with things like gardenia, you know, um, or ugh, orange blossom, my goodness, that's pure soap to me, then yeah, avoid this one. Oh, and just to remind everyone, in case you're one of my newer subscribers, this was a tester bottle and that's why this is not its original cap. They normally have a square cap, but you can get these for about 15 quid for the 30 mil. Uh, they only ever come came in 30 mil for some reason but I absolutely adore this one I adore the periwinkle and iris and I actually absolutely adore the marigold and gardenia as well even though my husband outrageously said that he thought it smelled like cucumber how dare he um that so that's that then if we look at hmm what's the order in which I'm going to do these this is a tall one so I'm going to talk about this first so guys, I did it. Um, if you watched the, my, the first video I made with my very lovely husband, this was his favourite from the designer scents that we sniffed. Kayali, Yum Pistachio Gelato. And so I, I said, I'll wait until it cools down and then I'll wear it. And I did wear it. And I don't like it. <laughs> so... It's it's weird with this one because, I mean, definitely there is something about this on my skin that is a disaster. So, and I've never found a Kaali other than citrus that isn't a disaster on me because either my skin pulls out the patchouli or they smell just entirely chemical. I haven't yet tried the velvet Santal on my skin and that, I think from smelling those perfumes i've i've had the the discovery set and i've had a few other samples the velvet santal is the one that i think smells the most expensive from that range 
um, and I think it smells lovely on paper. So I will give that one a test because it's getting warmer, um, uh, getting colder even. So I'm definitely going to try that one because I think that one smells heavenly. But I mean, so when I first spray this, that's when I like it the best. It's when it's the lightest. It's very, it's very sh sugar and sweet to me. Like this does not smell... It doesn't smell massively soapy. It doesn't smell massively flowery to me. It just smells, pretty much smells like what it says here um, when I first spray it. And then it, it go, and then it just turns into this chemical mess on me. It just smells, and I know people love this and I really wanted to love it. And I really wanted, I mean, my husband didn't even comment when I was wearing this. Like he made no comment about what I was wearing. I didn't even point it out to him. I just wanted to see if he'd say anything. So, because he'd he'd said he really liked it, but he thought maybe if he smelled it for too long, it would give him a headache. And it it almost gave me a headache because it is so sweet on me. But I mean, my skin does not get on with this. It smells really chemically. It smells really plasticky. And the the very deep dry down just smells like Britney Spears fantasy on me. It honestly just smells like fantasy. So the first spray, I get my, basically get my Demeter pistachio ice cream. That's what it smells like at first. And then it goes into this kind of a slightly more complex, um, nutty, sweet perfume. But that's when it just starts. It smells a bit like plastic. It smells a bit like antiseptic. It smells shampooy to me. Um, it didn't work. It didn't work. I could not wait to get it off. I absolutely despised when this dries down. Um, but then I really can't do fantasy either by Britney Spears. That one just smells appalling on me. All of the fantasy range smell appalling on me. So it's just, it's not for me. It just doesn't work very sadly. Um, let's see. On Friday... Did I, oh, I didn't give you the notes, did I? Before I move on, I will just do the full set of Carly notes because I think it makes much more sense. So pistachio, ice cream, uh, bergamot, hazelnut, rum and cardamom in the top. The middle notes are lily of the valley, pear, geranium, jasmine, peony, raspberry and white peach. And honestly, lily of the valley, geranium, jasmine and peony are like my least favourite when it comes to florals. So... I just, yeah, not into it. I think that's why it smells a bit shampooy to me. Base notes, whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy, uh, lucum. So that's like Turkish delight. Tonka bean, sandalwood, cedar and cacao. And it just, yeah, I, there's something about the dry down of this that really just smells like fantasy on me and to me. And I'm pretty sure that when I've walked around thinking I'm smelling grown women wearing fantasy, I think the chances are they're wearing this one. So I don't know. Um, okay. On Saturday, my beautiful friend Fern came round. Whenever she comes around, I always want to smell really nice. And we were having like a Halloween night. So I was all, I was kind of dressed up. I had, you know, the black and white Beetlejuice style, Beetlejuice style stripes on and black lipstick and my fang earrings. And, you know, it was all nice and Halloween-y. So I already knew what I wanted to wear in the evening. And I wanted to wear something during the day because I'd already showered that was going to kind of slightly wear off but anything that was left wasn't going to ruin the other perfume I was going to wear so I went for Mon O by Lolita Lempica because I wanted an aniseedy licorice smell right so this is Mon O people are so rude about this perfume on Fragrantica and just on YouTube and just generally people really don't like Mon O from Lolita Lempica I think it's really pretty and trust me if I didn't have Jeanne from Lonvin, I would buy a bottle of this perfume because if you can imagine Jeanne from Lonvin, if you know what that is, it's like a very musky, slightly creamy raspberry. Uh, it, it's got blackberry in it as well, but it's like raspberry, blackberry and a classic kind of bar soapy, creamy Lonvin musk. It's also got a lot of freesia in it and that's a beautiful floral. It's just, it's lush. I love that perfume. I've got a massive 100 ml bottle of it though. Um, if you can imagine that, but with some aniseed in the mix, you know, a little bit of that Lolita Lempica orig original DNA. It's a little bit like that. So the notes in this are anise, raspberry leaf, blackberry, lime, lemon and mandarin orange in the top. Middle notes, chamomile, iris, black currant, jasmine, sandback, lily of the valley and rose in the mid. Base is violet, white musk and sandalwood. And I think this is beautiful. I really enjoyed wearing it. 
every time I see this for a good price, I want it because I because it also matches the bottle of sweet and so sweet that I've got. And it's got like a rose gold lid. I think it's super cute. I think if I see it for like 15 quid, I might not be able to resist it, but I should because the deep dry down, it really does feel a bit like wearing jam. Like it's very, very similar. But at first, you definitely get more of that an uh, that like anise. So more of the aniseedy flavor um, and scent. I think it's super pretty. It's light. It's easy to wear. It's almost, and I think the pro probably the point of it was to give people who like Lolita Lempica something to wear in like hotter weather because I can't wear either Mon Premier or Le Parfum in warm weather. A lot of my Lolita Lempicas are things I can only wear in hot, uh, in like cold weather. So this one though, I could easily wear this in warmer weather. It was perfect for just like wandering around my flat, you know, just smelling kind of yummy while I was kind of just doing my daily duties, you know, while I was just getting on with my life. I really like this perfume. I don't understand why people are so rude about it. I don't really know what they were expecting from something called Mono from Lolita Lempica, but yeah, I really think it's pretty. I really, really like it. And I like that they didn't go for cherry again and that they did blackberry and raspberry instead because they've got a lot of very cherry centric perfumes. And I think this one's kind of stepping out of the norm a little bit. I think it's really pretty. You watch one day, one day you'll tune in and I'll blatantly have one of those, right? Because I, I just can't resist. Um, um, I love those bottles. Okay, so in the evening, you won't have seen this one before. This is one I got a while back from um, eBay because I've been wanting to smell it for ages. I've seen people talking about it. And again, I love this bottle. All right, so this is Lover Dose. Now you can see it is a purple bottle, but the juice in it, because it's quite syrupy, has started to change colour. So it's looking a little bit more like, is it uh, Lover Dose Red Kiss, I think it's called? But this is the original Lover Dose. Um, it wants to fall over all the time, but my goodness, what a cool bottle. As you can see, it says Lover Dose along the side there. Um, beautiful bottle, really cool design, really, really nice. I really have wanted to smell this one for ages because, of course, it is a licorice and aniseed perfume that is compared quite a lot to Lolita Lempica, the original one. And I just I just thought it everyone says it's really sexy. It looks sexy. It's a, I wanted the, the bottle in my collection. I love this black tube. It's so cool, like it's kind of stabbing through the heart. It's beautiful. And it is a nice perfume, however, um, <laughs> all this really did was make me utterly crave Lolita Lempica Le Parfum or realistically Mon Premier either. It, it really made me wish I was wearing one of those. So again, that this isn't one that I really need to keep because I don't love it at all, but I mean, it's nice. So the notes in this one, You'll understand why I don't like it as much when I explain the notes and how they smell to me. So the top notes are star anise, mandarin orange, and the middle notes are licorice, jasmine and gardenia. The base notes are vanilla, amber and woodsy notes. So this is compared to Lolita Lempica and Black Opium. And I totally, totally understand why, because this, there's something in this that smells like there's coffee. It really smells like there's a coffee note into it in, in, in it. It's very sweet. It's definitely got a noticeable star and ace. It's got a noticeable jasmine um, uh, and a noticeable licorice and vanilla. But it smells like coffee to me. It definitely smells like there's coffee in it, which I was totally chill with and I was kind of enjoying. And I thought, oh, that's nice. It's almost like... It's almost like wearing a Lolita Lempica Le Parfum with coffee, right? And without the cherry. So it's not as fruity and it's like there's a coffee note in it. So I get it. Yes, there is definitely a feeling of black opium. There's definitely a feeling of Lolita Lempica. The problem that I have with this is the more it dries down, the more jasmine there is. And the jasmine in this, it really reminded me of the jasmine in Alien. So... I can't do Alien, like I don't like Jasmine at the best of times, but the Alien Jasmine is, I mean, would you call it indolic? I guess so, like it's pretty crazy. It's very strong. 
And I think in my head, I'd never really considered it before, but I was kind of thinking, oh, yeah, I guess like the Jasmine in Alien, it does almost have a slightly aniseedy vibe to it in a way, which is probably why it smells so unusual compared to a lot of Jasmine perfumes. But this one, it was it's just there's too much Jasmine for me to it didn't like drive me mad or anything. But like I said, I just wished I was wearing Lolita Lampica because that is not a jasmine heavy perfume it's more violety and it's yeah i mean this is lovely and i'll be sad to get rid of it just because i i nearly swore i really love this bottle i love this bottle and i was going to bid on a um lover dose tattoo the one in the black bottle because that has a rice note but everyone was saying that it was like soapy and smelled like a body lotion and i am learning my lesson about trying not to get body lotiony perfumes because I always end up decluttering them. So I would totally recommend this. If you like Jasmine, if you like Alien, if you like Alien and you like um, Black Opium, I think you would love Lover Dose. I think even if you weren't normally into kind of licorice things, so if you weren't too into Lolita Lempica, generally speaking, I still think you might really like Lover Dose. I do think it's sexy. Uh, my friend Fern said I smelt nice. This is another one that my husband didn't comment on. I don't think this is musky the way that, in fact, it's not. It's not musky the way that um, Lolita Lempica is. And he he thinks that one's sexy. Whereas this one... I don't want to sound rude. I think it just in a weird way doesn't smell quite as complex and deep as Lolita Lempica, the La Parfum. But I think that is probably just due to that muskiness that develops and creates this kind of sexy vibe, you know. Anyway, so <laughs> I tried it and I do think it's pretty, but it's just it's there's no point in it's totally pointless in having this in my collection because I just want to wear Lolita Lempica and I will increasingly be wearing that one because the weather's cooling down and as soon as it's cold enough for Mon Premier that you're going to see that one a lot because it's I've got a big bottle of it and it's beautiful so the last thing that I actually properly wore oh I'm just falling slowly more and more in love with this um actually no there's two things but this is such a small little bottle. I did ask my husband from uh, Mongolian for Christmas, but I wore my little tiny Guest Seductive Noir. And the more I wear Guest Seductive Noir, the more I love it. I do think this one's maybe a bit fruitier, which is interesting because it's it's bergamot is the only fruit in it. But it, it feels, I think it feels more fruity to me than Mongolian did. Uh I love it. I think it's gorgeous. It's super easy to wear. This one actually lasts okay in the cold weather. Um, and it's such a perfect little, it's because this is a 15 mil. So I can just take this one to work. It's just perfect for that. And it's so pretty, really comforting. I just, I needed something comforting because it was like, I wore it yesterday, actually. It was a Friday. It was going to be kind of a little bit chilly occasionally, a little bit rainy. And I was just tired, you know, end of the week. I just wanted something cozy and pretty, but I wanted something sweet. So I went for this one. I think it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. You can get this for so cheap. So the notes in this, despite smelling like Mongolan and therefore smelling like there is lavender in it, there isn't lavender apparently in this one. It's top notes of sage, bergamot and peony, middle notes of iris, jasmine, sandback, lily of the valley, base notes of vanilla, Haitian vetiver and velvet. Can anyone tell me what velvet smells like? Absolutely no idea. So... Uh, this is this is also smelling a tiny bit. I think maybe this one is a bit more feminine. I I don't know whether it's the lack of the patchouli and the lack of lavender, but like with a similar kind of smell, but without a literal lavender. This one, and because it's slightly more fruity, it does smell a little bit more feminine, I think, than Monga, Mongolan. But not that Mongolan isn't feminine. It's just I think it's a bit more unisex. And I think this one maybe is a little bit more feminine. But honestly, still pretty unisex, to be fair, as most things with sage or lavender are. Absolutely love it. I just think it's beautiful. So I also rewore my tiny little sample of this just like one evening. 
I just want someone to make a dupe of Burberry Goddess because I really like it, but I absolutely think there might be a little bit of that Veramos tar smell in in there somewhere. Not a huge amount, only a little bit. But the more it dries down, the more I get just a hint of that. And I am starting to get so like aware and so irritated by that smell that if there's even a slightest hint of that in a perfume now I am just going to declutter so the next time I do a declutter you'll see more stuff that even if I only smell it when I'm hormonal if I can smell that tar smell I am getting rid of the perfume I can literally cannot bear it anymore I smell it everywhere in London I just constantly smell that horrible smell and god bless my my husband even he has one and I had to say to him the other day I was like I'm not saying I'm not asking you not to wear it but I'm just saying like I really I really smell that tar smell in this this um aftershave you're wearing and I just I can't he thinks it smells like spicy ginger which when he first got it is what I thought it smelled like but now pure tar and smelling that on his neck is extremely upsetting so I get a tiny bit of that in Burberry Goddess just a tiny tiny hint so what I really want is for her companies to start making dupes because that's exactly the same when I wore last week um Larive my only wish if you can remember I was saying that Cacherelle's Yes I Am also has a little bit of that tar in it and I can smell it, that kind of veramos, whatever they call it. And it, it just means that I wouldn't I wouldn't buy a bottle of that, even though I love that scent profile. The La Reve doesn't have that. It just isn't there. So I'm hoping that La Reve, because they're normally really quick and really good for getting like decent dupes, if they can get anything that's even slightly like Burberry Goddess, then I'll be happy. I'm going to talk now. And if you're not interested in seeing stuff that I haven't got the bottles for, now is the time to run away. So I went and I sniffed some stuff and that was super fun. I'm just going to get the notes up because I've got like a billion screenshots here. What to start with? Okay, I'm going to start with this one then. Um... So, Molten Brown, Milky Musk, and this was the EDT. I don't think they had the EDP there, they just had the EDT. Um, this is a perfume that I really feel like I've smelt before. I, I don't think that this one smells original. <laughs> so, I mean, my version of a Milky Musk, a Yes Please Lonvin, gorgeous. This one, I think, smells weirdly slightly masculine and way too sugary sweet. I find this one a bit sickening, um, but this has ambroxan in it. So take what I'm going to say with a with a pinch of salt, because I hate ambroxan. It smells weird and screechy. Yeah, I mean, this smells like there's flowers in it, even though it doesn't list flowers. So this says top notes of peach and pear middle notes musk and vanilla and ambroxan base notes tonka bean and white cedar extract this is compared to fresh cream it doesn't smell like fresh cream it absolutely doesn't no 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 fresh cream smells gourmand this one smells like a sweet perfume you know it it's it it may have like that kind of slightly creamy vibe but it very much still smells like perfumey. This is compared to uh, Heliotrope Blanc by LT Piver. And I have a, actually, I just gave it away. I literally just gave that one away as well. That one, it, I just, I, I, I've kind of realised that I don't get on very well with Heliotrope. I think Heliotrope bothers me quite often. And that one is Honey Heliotrope. It's quite floral. It, it's one of like, I think it's like, it's called a, um, what is it called? It's not even called a perfume or a cologne. It's called a lotion. That's what it's called because it's so old. It's such an ancient perfume, that one. And it smells ancient. It's got like a slightly old fashioned perfumey smell while also 
not smelling kind of old-fashioned perfume the way that like something like june and or obsession does it's got a lighter touch than that but it it this is that kind of thing this is that kind of scent to me yeah I really, I really did not like this. It didn't smell how I expected it to smell. I think it's got too much sweetness, too much wood. I just don't, yeah, I just don't like it. But again, like the Ambroxan is probably really, really damaging this for me because I hate Ambroxan. So then I also smell, and this one I kind of like. Um, okay, so this is from Fresh. And I, this is one's lemon sugar. This is the one I, I sprayed. Um, so fresh lemon sugar. When I first sprayed it, I thought, well, my Aqua Colonia from 4711, my lemon and ginger smells very, very much like this. Um, and then this one just gets a bit more complex, but it is a very similar kind of perfume. This, this one has, well, I'll, I'll read you the notes. So top notes, lemon, yuzu, mandarin, orange, middle notes of ginger flower, lychee, and African orange flower, base notes, caramel, oak moss, and sandalwood. I don't think you get a ton of um, caramel in here, but it does like sweeten it up really nice. I definitely think I get a little bit of the gingeriness. I do get a little bit of oak moss and orange flower so i think that's what's making this smell more like a perfume but it's also making it ever so slightly unisex it hasn't veered into the kind of body lotion and perf uh, like um sorry body lotion or soap smell but it's still not quite gourmand because it has something else kind of lurking in the background that you can tell is not something you would eat if you see what I mean but I do think it's really pretty is it worth the price of fresh oh, I don't know um if you're willing to spend lots of money on perfumes then yes um if you're not genuinely aqua colonia lemon and ginger an absolute banger absolutely delicious yeah, this one just has something else going on. It smells more unisex, I think. It's got just a vibe of something unisex. But I do think that one's really pretty. And then I did this just for my own interest, right? So the first time I... This is Ellie Saab. Eli, Eli Saab? I'm not really sure because I always thought that El, this was Ellie Saab and I thought it was a lady, but I think it's a, a male perfumer. So I don't know how to pronounce that. And I, I do apologise if I get it hideously wrong. So I went, um, these are really good little cards. As you can see, you can tick off what you've uh, sprayed on it. So I wanted to smell Girl of Now again, just because the first time when this came out uh, and I went to smell it, I was just so sickened by it. I thought it was so sickly sweet. And I, as you can see, I'm wearing much more sweet perfume nowadays. Like, so I thought, I'm just going to smell this one again. I mean, I still don't like it. It's still not for me. But it was interesting because what I don't like about this is not the fact that it's sweet. I was smelling it and thinking, oh, this is very sweet, but it's not as sweet as I remember it being. For me, what I don't like about this one is just that it's so floral. Like to me, it's got too much orange blossom. The patchouli is not massively strong. But I can really smell the orange blossom mag magnolia in here. And when that's mixed with the almond, it just makes me feel a bit queasy. But it's that it's kind of a less screechy, but quite similar vibe to like, um, what's it called? Dior Poison Girl and like... Uh, Azaro Wanted Girl. It's in that same kind of thing to me where it's very, very sweet. And in the top, you've got some kind of fruits. But this one, it, I don't find quite as screechy. But it's it's just also very floral. So it's ever so slightly gourmand while also being slightly soapy. So it's just not my kind of thing. But I didn't find it anywhere near as upsetting this time. And the guy on the counter was saying to me that 
in the whole of John Lewis, the only perfumes that haven't raised their prices are the Ellie Saabs. So you can get a small bottle of this for like £35 or something. So actually, these are now relatively affordable compared to other perfumes. So, I mean, I think I kind of get it. I kind of get it. I wouldn't want to wear it, but I kind of get it. And while I was there, I thought I'd smell one of the other ones just out of pure interest because he was saying, he said that one of them that was there was really patchouli heavy and this one wasn't. So this is the one I smell. Oof. Oh, I hate this. So another Ely Saab. This one, Girl of Now Forever. Woof. Um, you might be able to see my scribblings here. And what I've written down is Love Child of Delina and Good Girl. And that's supposed to be a horrified face. I don't like Delina at all. I find it really sickly, but not in like a too sweet way. It just actually makes me feel a bit sick. I'm not sure why. I think I struggle with lychee a little bit, but there's something about the lychee and rose in that that really, it rubs me the wrong way. I still, I still not quite sure why. Good girl, I just hate. I hate that perfume. It's possibly, I hate it way more now than I do the old fruit chulies because it's full of that tar note. So it's a Veramos bomb. I hate the way the tuberose is in that. I just find it very cloying, strong. I just don't like it. And there's definitely some of that in here. I really don't like it. Oh, I really don't like it. And there's definitely that Vera Moss smell in here too, which is, I think, what's pushing it towards the good girl kind of vibe. I wonder if there's that in Delina as well. I wonder if what I haven't realised is that Delina's full of that and that makes me hate it. Don't know. So the notes for uh, Girl of Now Forever. Raspberry and lemon peel in the top. Middle notes, almond, black currant, rose and orange blossom. Base of vanilla, patchouli, cashmere and musk. So I'm sure there's loads of people who love this because Good Girl and Delina are loved by so many people. Um, so And if you like both of those, again, you can get this for a real bargain. So I would say, yes. I will go and sit on a different side of the tube from you if I smell you wearing it, but that's, you know, you'd probably do the same if you smell me wearing June, right? I mean, so each to their own, but no, I don't, re I really don't like that one, but I do, I do understand now why people like the original. Yeah, just too floral for me, just too much of that orange blossom, like I just get Orange Blossom can really, in the same way with Jasmine, Orange Blossom really takes over a perfume for me. It really kind of totally, like, makes it its own party. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always the star of the show if there's Orange Blossom in something. So, yeah. So, I think that's everything to say. Now, if you saw on Friday, I wanted to put up my little Elizabeth Arden thing because... I have the big video because I, I got that Elizabeth Arden set ages ago. Um, I actually made that video a fair while ago as well. So I just put that one up because I already have a lot of the Untold collection and I have a video about that. And I know I'm going to be wearing one of those quite soon because the weather's getting colder. So I'm putting that up for Wednesday. So you will be able to watch like the whole thing about that range if you're interested. If you're in the UK, you can still get some of those on eBay like super easily and super cheaply. So that's why I put that one up on Friday. Uh, I think that's it, guys. Tell me what you've been wearing. Let me know um, if you've got any of these. I, I hope everyone has a lovely actual Halloween this week and I hope everyone has a wonderful week. I will be back next week with hopefully a whole new set of delicious things and you're all wonderful thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching my content this is a really fun hobby to have and yeah you're great bye guys